Tonight, Jason gets a response to allegations against him of sexual misconduct. The city of Pullman makes some cosmetic changes to the library. And Latin Heritage Month kicks off with multiple events. Maroon News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Vanessa McMahon. And I'm Abby Tudor. Welcome to Murrow News 8. After the Daily Evergreen broke the news of sexual misconduct against Jason Gesser yesterday, now we have Jenny Power in studio with more on Gesser's allegations response. Jennifer? News about the sexual misconduct allegations against Assistant Athletic Director at the Cougar Athletic Fund, Jason Gesser, spread across the country yesterday. Last night, Gesser responded to the article with a letter to the editor of the Daily Evergreen. Gesser called the allegations false and spoke of his devotion to his family and community. He also expressed disappointment at the public exposure of the complaints because of the others that would face scrutiny as a result. At the end of his letter, Gesser said, I will not allow my name to be unfairly smeared, and I will continue to passionately serve our university as a proud member of Cougar Nation. As this investigation continues, we will keep you updated with more information regarding the story as we get it. I'm Jennifer Power, Murrow News 8. After hearing complaints about game day parking restrictions, when fan comes into town for the game, Brianna Childress spoke to Cougs and alum to gain different perspectives. During football season They're at WSU, student. fans travel to Pullman to attend the big games, but this influx of fans means parking restrictions for students. The end. They're kicking. The next video. WSU uh, student Curtis Fletcher said he and his fiance were also affected by the restrictions. Parking, that's really unfair to her, and then it's also unfair to me because, like, instead of walking the campus and that I have to stop what I'm doing my day to actually drop her off to work and some of that so it's pretty inconvenient for both of us so it's around 7 30 on a Thursday night but as you can see much of the parking lot across from Beasley has already been filled by tailgaters awaiting Saturday's game when we sell permits we assume that the permit holder is going to be parking Monday through Friday and on Saturday and Sundays when permits in most lots aren't required we do have the authority to take that lot over and use it for the purpose of events. Um, out of some of these things, we actually get some pretty good ideas, and sometimes it can generate a change in policy. So if there's something that we're not doing right, we, we definitely want to hear about it. Students are required to vacate lots by 5.30 p.m. Thursdays and Fridays and all day Saturdays. Incoming freshmen will soon participate in a new mentorship program launched by ASWSU. The program's goal, getting first year students more involved on campus. The program will also cater to students not invested in first year programs like Emerging Leaders, Multicultural Student Services, and Smart Start. ASWSU says the groundwork for their program will partially emulate the Edward R. Murrow College of Communications mentor program no word on its implementation date yet, but ASWSU says they want to continue planning to make sure it's effective. In honor of Latin Heritage Month kicking off tomorrow, WSU and on-campus sponsors will host events over the next few weeks. Carlos Salazar, the assistant director of the Chicanx Latinx Student Center, coordinated this year's celebration. Some students include Zumba lessons, a trivia night, and workshops to showcase Latin American culture as a whole. Events begin Monday in various locations throughout the Cub and the Chinook. For a complete list of activities, go to chilotcenter.wsu.edu slash Latin Heritage Month events. When, when we come back, we'll tell you about consequences for stealing political signs. And new information on the Pullman Library facelift when Murrow News 8 continues. No more pencils. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. School's out for summer. School's out forever. School out with fever.
this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. And it can happen in every place. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org because great things happen when we live united. Taking political signs comes with serious consequences. Murrow News 8 reporter Bradley Warren joins us to explain how a local politician deals with this problem. It's election season in Washington State and as you poll into Pullman, you'll see political signs all over the place. Tensions are high right now due to the hotly contested 5th congressional race between Lisa Brown and Congresswoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers. Both Democrats and Republicans have signs spread across the district, but in Pullman, a few of those signs have gone missing. This has been a problem for both Brown and McMorris-Rogers, but locally, this has been a problem for John Mark Mankey, who's running for county commissioner. Uh, so far, there's been about five. Um, two disappeared in Albion. Uh, I had actually I had a couple missing from Oaksdale, but one of them turned up. I've had three stolen from up around the Pullman disposal area. Once, it's kids. Twice, coincidence. Three times, yeah, now we have a problem. Signs like these are all over Pullman, and police want you to know that taking one of them is a serious crime. So the penalty for stealing a political sign in Washington is a misdemeanor. That means that you can go to jail for up to 90 days. Uh, and or you can find up to a thousand dollars. There's been so far one report in Pullman of stolen signs, but multiple in Spokane, in the Spokane Valley, and on the South Hill. We just want to make sure that the signs are kept in a respected place. Our volunteers have put hundreds of hours into making sure that these signs are being distributed. John Mark Mankey believes that at least one of his signs was removed by accident, but he has no idea what happened to the rest. If you observe political signs being stolen, you're asked to call Pullman Police at 509-334-0802. Reporting in Pullman, I'm Bradley Merle News 8. Last night, a series of gas explosions and fires erupted in Massachusetts, killing one man and seriously injuring several others. Firefighters put out 35 different fires north of Boston, stretching across dozens of city blocks. An issue with gas services triggered these explosions, leaving some gas lines overpressurized. Because of the emergency, officials shut down power in surrounding areas, leaving about 18,000 people without power. Of the injured residents, one remains in critical condition and another in serious condition. Pullman City Council discussed numerous issues in their last meeting. Topics included a new library logo, transit communications, and a potential warming shelter for the homeless. Neal Public Library Service Director Joanna Bailey proposed a new logo for the library inspired by books, literacy, and discovery. The NCIL also passed a resolution to replace two diesel buses with electric versions. Councilman Nathan Weller also suggested the possibility of creating a warming shelter to house the homeless population during colder months. Prosecutors prepare criminal charges after sheriff's deputies, animal control officers, and volunteers rescued 255 dogs from two illegal breeding sites in South Stevens County on Tuesday. In one location, deputies found 89 dogs and puppies in compromised health in a 600-square-foot mobile home. Police found one puppy nearly dead and the body of another improperly disposed of. Police say they spent weeks trying to secure the search warrant and planning this raid. When we come back, we'll take a look at what you'll need to wear to the football game this weekend with Jasmine's Weekend Forecast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Mm -hmm. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. 
There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. As fall approaches, our days of warm weather and sunshine are sadly starting to disappear. Let's head over to the Weather Center so Jasmine Durachi can tell us how to dress for Cougar Football Saturday. Jasmine? Thanks so much, you guys. Well, have great news if you're not quite ready to break up with those summer weather temperatures just yet, although that trend of cloudiness will continue throughout the day. As you can see today, our high is 64, I'm sorry, our high is 72 with an average of 65 degrees and a low of 64 around 7 p.m. Though our winds are going to stay at a steady five miles an hour and now looking statewide we can see Pullman like I just said a high of 72 and a low of 42 Spokane also pretty consistent high of 72 and a 46 Wenatchee we see a high of 70 and a low of 49 Yakima your high will be 73 and 42 will be your low and then Seattle and Olympia over on the west side are going to see a little bit of showers and then tomorrow's forecast you're going to see 66 degrees in the morning and it's going to heat up to 70 degrees in the afternoon with an evening low of 58 degrees. So that's pretty good news if you like those warmer temperatures, although you might want to grab a jacket on the way to the game since it is in the evening. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited about the game and I'm even happier that the summer temperatures are continuing and I don't have to wear a super heavy coat to the game. So I might. Oh, and then <laughs> our Murrow News 8 five-day outlook Sunday you're gonna start with a high of 64 and a low of 38 Monday is gonna be a high of 64 with a low of 38 Tuesday you're gonna see a high of 67 with a low of 38 Wednesday your high will be 66 and a low of 39 and Thursday your high is gonna be 64 with a low of 40 and that's pretty good because you're gonna see the Sun peeking out because we've seen cloudiness all throughout this week but it will start to warm up giving us the last few weeks of weather that we have until it starts cooling down again. Thank you, Jasmine. When we come back, we're going to get you up to speed on sports with WSU's Cougar Corner when Murrow News 8 returns. Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thundershark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play. <laughs> what you wear... <laughs> Or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Joining us now, we have Taylor Swanson to give us a sports update. Yeah, that's right, Vanessa. This weekend on uh, our WCU Cougar Corner, we talk about the sexual misconduct allegations um, against Jason Gesser, our assistant athletic director to the Cougar Athletic Fund. Uh, also, our Cougar women's volleyball team in their undefeated streak. We'll also talk about the Cougs and the pros and how they're doing. Man, our volleyball team seems to be on fire. Yeah, volleyball I'm to see what undefeated, you guys are about. football undefeated, women's soccer undefeated. Killing it. Nice. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great night, and don't forget to follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, Pullman. Go Cougs.